A simple machine. A simple machine is a mechanical device used to manipulate forces. Their size, their direction, the distance they're applied. And since they manipulate forces and work is a force times a distance, they're connected to work and doing work, which is how energy gets transferred. What they do not do is they do not, let's stress, do not create or destroy energy because they cannot violate the law of conservation of energy. And we'll see how the connection works here as we move along. Now we're going to focus on three simple machines. There's other simple machines that are basically versions of these three basic simple machines, or there are compound machines, which are combinations of these simple ones. The three basic ones that you probably studied in eighth grade, and they are the lever, the pulley and the inclined plane, or ramps like we've studied already. Levers show up everywhere, like in tools, like a hammer is a type of lever, a screwdriver, a pair of pliers, also in sports equipment like a baseball bat, a hockey stick, a tennis racket. These are all levers, a rake, anything with a handle basically is a lever. Pulleys are just basically wheels with strings wrapped around them, and inclined planes are like ramps. So we'll give you some examples here in a second. But one of the big concepts with lever or simple machines are what we call mechanical advantage, the quote-unquote force multiplier. Now let me give you some definitions, and I'll show you the applications so that they can make a little bit more sense as you see the example problems. But there's what's called an ideal or theoretical mechanical advantage. We call it IMA or TMA, and in this, in this case, there is no friction considered or factored in. And then there's the actual mechanical advantage, which accounts for friction, and so we'll only, always end up with the actual mechanical advantage being less than or equal to the ideal mechanical advantage. The efficiency is the effectiveness with which energy is transferred. With greater friction, there's less efficiency. Now, when there's no friction, the efficiency will always equal 100%. So let me give you the mathematical definitions. The IMA, or TMA, is the distance input. So D stands for distance over the distance output. And you can see here, if we have a distance, which would be, like, say, in meters, divided by another distance in meters, there'll be, there'll be no units for IMA. And that's going to be the case for all four of these quantities. The AMA will be the output force over the input force. Now what can get a little confusing here is that for the IMA we have an, a distance input over output, now we have an output over an input and we're dealing with forces. And it's going to be a little bit of a challenge not to get confused here, but it should be pretty straightforward to see that F, F stands for force in newtons. So we're going to have a, a force in newtons divided by another force in newtons. So once again, the units will cancel out. Another thing that's going to always happen in these cases, basically, the output force is basically going to be the weight of, of the object that you're trying to move. So think about that, and I'll give you the examples here in a second. And the input force is nine times out of ten, it's how hard you are pushing or pulling to get the job done, to do the work. So it's usually what we call the effort, quote unquote effort. But it's a force in newtons. The efficiency can be calculated two ways. You can divide the AMA by the IMA. That's option one. Option two is to take the work output, which many times will essentially be the energy gain, because work is energy transfer. So energy gain, which in most cases will be GPE. Probably 9 out of the 10 of the problems we do, the work output will be the GPE gain, the energy gain because of the simple machine. The work and the denominator here will be the work input. I'll give you an example in a second. 
but there will be no units because it will be joules over joules. They'll cancel. And they'll come out in decimal numbers that will multiply by 100 to turn them into percentages. So here's the example. Here we have a pulley system. As I showed you in class, a bunch of different pulley systems. Here we have a system in which we have a fixed stationary pulley, a wheel, hanging to a ceiling. Uh, then with a string, the string is the blue thread that I have here on the diagram. With a pulley at the bottom holding up and attached to a 1200 newton weight. And somebody is pulling on the string or the rope, the blue rope, with a force of 700 newtons, and they're going to lift the 1,200 newton weight. So typically without a pulley system, you wouldn't be able to lift the 1,200 newton weight with a 700 newton force. You'd need a 1,200 newton force to lift a 1,200 newton weight. But with pulleys, it changes the nature of the work. You're still going to do the same amount of work because, as I was showing you in class, even though it lessens the amount of force it takes to do the work, you're going to have to pull farther. In the ideal case in this situation, what we do is we look at the bottom pulley and we count the number of strands of rope holding up that bottom pulley. And if you do that here, and I'll use black, you have a little bit a strand here and a strand here that I could cut with scissors, so to speak. Those two strands are what are holding up that bottom pulley. The top pulley basically has three strands, but we're not looking at the top pulley right now. We're just looking at the bottom pulley and it has those two strands or pieces of rope of that one long rope. And once again, we have a rope that goes over and around a bunch of pulleys, one long rope threaded through pulleys like this. The tension in that rope, in the ideal case, is going to be the same everywhere if there's no friction. We're assuming there's no friction in the pulleys and the rope itself doesn't weigh anything and the pulleys themselves don't weigh anything right now. So there'll be one long rope, but it has these separate pieces, so to speak. In the ideal case here, where those two little black marks are that I just put down there, those would be each pulling up with 600 newtons of force in the ideal case, so that it would hold up or could pull up the 1,200 newton weight. But in the case given here, I actually have 700 newtons of force holding the whole thing up, either stationary or moving with constant velocity. We're not accelerating right now. So let me put all these pieces together and explain it. So what we have here in part A, we're looking for the IMA, the ideal mechanical advantage. Now with ropes and pulley systems, we do this the fast way. We don't need to do a calculation. We just look at the setup and we count the ropes like I did with those two little black marks. The ideal mechanical advantage here is two. So with pulley systems, all you do is count the ropes or the pieces of rope that are holding up the bottom pulley where the two black marks are. Now in part B here, now we have to calculate the actual mechanical advantage. And the equation, if you look on the previous page, is the force output, that's force output, F output, over the force input. In this case, the AMA, once again, the force output is typically the weight or load you're trying to lift. In this case, it's 1,200 newtons. You're trying to lift a 1,200 newton force or weight with a 700 newton force. All right, that's how hard you're pulling to do the work here. In the ideal case, once again, that 700 would have been a 600 because that would assume no friction. There must be some friction in this system. So the actual mechanical advantage is not quite 2.0 or 2. It's 1.7. It's 1.7. It's not... The 2.0, it's always less than or equal to the ideal case. We have to pull a little bit harder than, than we wanted to because there's some friction. If there was no friction, we'd, we'd be pulling that blue rope with a 600 newton force. So part E there, uh, to, to figure that out, we can take one of the two equations, and the easiest one to use in this case is just to use the AMA, looking at the previous page of notes or the top part of your notes there, over the IMA, and in this case, that would be the 1.7 over 2.0. So the efficiency here would come out to be 0.85, 0 0.85, which is 85%.
you can say 0.85 or 85%. I don't care which version you use there, but don't say 0.85%. All right, we also need to figure out uh, the amount of rope we need to pull. And once again, you can take some shortcuts eventually with ropes, but here let's just do it a little bit more mathematically. Um, that's actually part, that last part we just did was part C. That was part C. Now we're doing part D. And what we can use there in that case is the IMA. If you go back and look at the equations, we have the IMA equals the distance input, D in, over D out. All right, and the IMA we know is 2, based on the counting of the ropes. Your input distance, we don't know yet. That's what we're trying to figure out, your input distance. But your output distance here is how high the load goes. In this case, the load is going to be lifted 3 meters. That's 3 meters. So without a calculator here, we can see that the input distance is 6 meters. In other words, we need to pull the rope 6 meters in order for the weight to rise 3 meters. And you can start to see how some of these proportions fit together, I hope. That gives us a mechanical advantage of 2. We have to use... We're using basically half the force necessary, but pulling it twice as far. But then we also have to figure in friction here. In part E, the energy dissipated to friction. And there are several ways to do part E. And one way is to figure out the output work, the work out. The work out is the energy we gain from, from raising the, the load. And that would be, in other words, the, the change in GPE. So the work output would be the change in MGH. What's changing is the H. So the output work here is the Mg, which basically Mg is, well, the mass of this thing is going to be basically 120 kilograms because the weight was 1,200 newtons times 10, or in other words, the mg really is the weight. T 10 times 120 is 1,200 newtons, times the change in height that it's going to undergo. It's going to undergo a, a 3 meter change in height. So the output work, what you're gaining in the system here, is 3,600 joules of energy. Well, what was the work input? Well, the work input, we can calculate by taking your force times your distance of applying the force, so the input work was a 700 newton force, that's how hard you were pulling on the rope, times a distance of 6 meters. So the work output here is 4200, I'm sorry, work input, that's supposed to be input. Work input is 4200 joules. So you put in 4200 joules of work. In the ideal case, you would have put in 3600 joules of work and gained 3600 joules of energy but you only gained 3,600 joules of energy. That was your work output. So how much energy was dissipated to friction? I'm a little out of space here, so I'm going to transfer back over to this empty spot over here. Basically, if you take the 4,200, 4,200, and subtract the 3,600, which you could have done in your head, is 600 joules of energy dissipated to friction. So that's the answer to part E. Another way you could have done that is simply by figuring out, and there are some shortcuts you'll see as time goes on, the force of friction. And here would have been the, the shortcut. The force of friction here must have been 100 newtons because you should have been able to lift this load with a 600 newton force, which is half of 1,200 newtons. But you're using 700 newtons of force. So 100 newtons of pulling force must have been used to overcome the friction. Well, you think about this, if friction was 100 newtons and you were pulling for 6 meters, it was acting over a 6 meter distance, the work done by friction, and I'll squeeze it in here, would be the force of friction, 100 newtons of friction, times the 6 meters of distance of rope that had to be pulled with the friction between the rope and the pulleys. That gives you the same answer, the 600 joules of work done by friction, negative work, work that's being turned into heat internally in the system.